hours down. Um, we've, we've had to cut hours of operation, cut jobs, basically do everything in our power to keep our doors open. Obviously, our sales were, were directly reflected by the foot traffic, but never in this time did I or any of my colleagues compromise their business ethics or business goals. Um, but with today's economy the way it is, things are very, very scary. And we as business owners downtown don't know if we can keep our doors open much longer. Uh, we need this ordinance to be lifted, and we need the support from you guys to let the public know that this ordinance is lifted or our business goals and or ethics are no longer, they're in compromise. And, um, you know, we as business owners are not going to allow our businesses to close because of an ordinance that was put in place six years ago. Um, we, we are in no time to discriminate against an entire age group. We need their income in our city. And basically, I urge you today to reconsider this ordinance so that we as business owners can survive and create jobs in this city. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let me ask you to please uh, refrain from uh, applauding for regardless of who the speaker or what uh, their position is. Let's please try to uh, keep some decorum uh, so that we can uh, continue to hear from those that are interested in speaking. Uh, next is Roger McCardo. Roger. Roger Mercado, one of the owners of Patio 33 in the uh, River District. I see that you cut the applause right before I came. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting back, I feel a little bit like uh, Kevin Bacon in the movie um, Footloose trying to get music back into the, the city limits here. <laughs> um, you've heard some of our colleagues speak before about people generating people. And that's one thing that, that we want to consider in support of lifting the ordinance, whether it's a probationary period for six months or whatever stipulations we can put in for consideration. But uh, I know as, as working with um, Don Pate's office and the city redevelopment office, they set aside through the CRA, which in turn are members of the city council, almost $400,000 um, in spe special event planning, a subsidy for businesses, um, and planning to bring people back into downtown. So that tells me that city council, as the CRA, has recognized the fact that we need to do something to fix downtown. I know I spoke with Jason and Joey with Downtown House of Peace and the, the craft construction event this past Saturday. They did four times the amount of business they normally do on Saturday. That's an event for kids. We have an opportunity to really diversify the kind of activities we plan in the future for all ages, bringing them into downtown. One of the things that we you've heard before about the decrease in foot traffic, we as a business also closed a couple nights out of the week because we just weren't seeing the businesses um, flourish downtown because people are going elsewhere. People say it's the economy, but you look at other areas, whether it's corporate franchises or new developments in South Fort Myers, and those places are busy every single night. So we can't use the economy as a reason why downtown is suffering. I had a parent ask me if the ordinance is lifted, what are we going to do to ensure their parents' safety or their children's safety? As you heard uh, Matt mentioned earlier about the alliance of business owners, we as an alliance have agreed to meet monthly. One key element of that is also to involve law enforcement in those meetings to make sure that they are. Um, well informed of what activities we have planned and to hear from their end what can we do to make things work so mistakes that happened in the past won't happen again in the future. Doing that alliance, we provide a controlled environment for the kids to come downtown or the young adults to come downtown. Instead of sitting at home at a house party or sitting in a parking lot with a six pack, we will have increasing bike patrols downtown as you've already funded. Um, all the bars and salaries have an increase in security. So there's a controlled environment instead of um, some of the 18 to 20 year olds drinking. One of the things we've even considered is if someone is flagrantly intoxicated under the age of 21, we wouldn't even admit them into the, into the club. So we're trying to put safeguards in place um, to make sure that the 18 and 20 year olds aren't affected by um, the temptation to, to drink underage. In closing, we talked about the economic impact. You've heard some businesses that have already closed, some on the verge of closing. I'm sure if the city were to look at the, the expense reports and the revenues for the parking garages and the parking lots, you've seen a decrease in the revenue coming into the city because not many people are coming downtown anymore. Change in the ordinance would increase the amount of jobs, increase businesses. I was talking to an ABC reporter earlier and we were talking about the ordinance and you can't even get a subway sub or a Quiznos sub after 5 o'clock during the week because they close. There's no reason for them to stay open because there's not the foot 
traffic. We need to do something to change that to get people, encourage people to come back into downtown. This month in May, there's two different homecomings at Harborside. That's an opportunity for those students, depending on their age, to, to come in, into downtown and hang out. We are located in the Patio de Leon, and people have asked, how can people just don't hang out there and play music and, and have conversation? I think the feeling is they don't feel that they're welcome into downtown anymore because of ordinance. So there's other places that are opening doors to them. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and we hope you give uh, great consideration to the ordinance. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, next is a uh, Bruno CYR. Okay. Uh, for agenda item number 27. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Bruno Sierra, and I'm here to represent Metro Cabs. We're a business also located downtown Fort Myers. And I'm here to tell you that we are willing to support all the businesses downtown by attempting to uh, bring more clients uh, to the downtown area. And we'd like to propose maybe a couple of uh, different ideas. First of all, Metro Cabs would like to show its support for the age reduction, allowing young adults to frequent the establishments of Fort Myers River District. Metro Cabs will do the best to promote and encourage these young adults to visit the River District. Metro Cabs will assist the city police in ensuring a rapid evacuation of the River District at the end of the evenings on Friday and Saturday nights, which are the most popular nights. Metro Cabs would like to propose that the city establish taxi stands within the River District, allowing patrons to direct themselves to specific areas to find rapid transportation out of the city. This would allow both safety and control over the evacuation of these patrons. Finally, Metro Cabs would also be willing to discuss providing, a, sorry for a, a nominal fee a shuttle service from your parking areas to the local businesses establishments. As the gentleman said earlier from FGCU, uh, Metro Cab has now purchased a, a shuttle bus. We'd be more than happy to provide a shuttle from FGCU to the downtown area. We are here to do everything we can uh, to help the, uh, uh, the River District grow and uh, be a better place for uh, uh, everyone to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mark Grunberg. Item number 27. So that I can have people ready after Mark is Luke. I think it says Graham. If I pronounce it in two. Hey, who lives, How you doing? All right. What I understood this meeting was basically about was making sure if you guys decide to, to do the right thing and allow us to have 18 and up back in our businesses again, and maybe rescue the city from the bankruptcy in which it's currently headed, that it is a way to solve the problems. Real quickly, I just want to beat you up for a second on one thing. I stood before most of you six years ago before you passed this ridiculous ordinance and told you the effect on this city would be catastrophic. You're going to have kids in the street running around with no direction because there's nowhere for them to go within the city limits. The violent crime rate in our area has skyrocketed. And it's all because there's nowhere for these kids to go. Look around. They get out of school. What is there for them to do? If they don't play sports, they either get in their car and get drunk and stupid and take drugs and run around and wreak havoc on the rest of us who are trying to live civilized lives. The only direction they have in the evening since their parents are dead tired and trying to support two well not asshole with two incomes is still falling 40% short of making it. That these kids have no direction because mom and dad just don't care. And it's a sad truth, but it's a reality that we are the babysitters for this crowd, or we were prior to that privilege being removed. Now I own the Bottom Line Nightclub, which is the oldest established, existing, ongoing, currently by the same person owned the nightclub in the history of this town. And I'm going to tell you what I saw. In, 19, in the year 2000, my nightclub topped out at $1,200,000. Not a lot of money for a business the size of it, but it's a lot of money to make. Last year we topped out at $620,000. I know the economy sucks, 
But the real suck is the fact that we've lost 35 to 40% of our business with the 18 and up loss to our business. Now you guys are looking at me saying, well, geez, oh whiz, if they can't drink alcohol, why do you want them in your business in the first place since you have an alcohol establishment? And the answer is simple, people. As two of these people have pointed out in a different way, I'm going to put it a little more succinctly. But people go where the people are. Now, I have watched this town turn into a ghost town since Danny All ran to down your throats that she wanted the big high rises built in her district and she sacrificed the 18 and up business and, and she agreed to get rid of it or do what you could to eliminate it. So there's huge sky rises, sky high rises that are down there on the river can remain there vacant, not producing any income whatsoever for 80% of them. There's quarter million, $500,000 buildings per unit are empty. This town is reaping no benefit whatsoever. But I guarantee you this, you would have made a heck of a lot of money on the two and a half million dollars in business I lost in the last six years based exclusively on sales tax alone of $175,000 and just retail sales tax that the state would have collected on the business I couldn't produce. So what do they do? They come to us because they want to dance. I was talking today to my partner and I said, it's just like that movie Flashdance. It's exactly the same thing. And somebody out there has a humorous impression that it was true. But the bottom line is it is true. This group has taken away the fun from this town. People don't come here because the people aren't here anymore. I have watched over 15 restaurants fail. For those of you who don't know it, my sister Bonnie owns the Oasis restaurant, one in the Justice Building <laughs> and one on, on Martin Luther. And she's telling me her business is down 35%. People aren't coming downtown anymore because you have ripped the life out of it. So my final feeling is this. If you are looking for a solution to what ails it, there's one thing you can do if you're in business and want to make sure that you are actually controlling the age group. This book does it. It comes free of charge. It has every single license plus every form of identification available, period. I'm sorry if we can ask you to wind that. I am winding now, Chad. Right. Sorry. The other thing is, somebody mentioned the machine. There is definitely a machine out there. It's not too expensive. You can run the card through it. It shows an actual photograph of the person. So if the idea is fake, it's fake. And lastly, when we were allowed to have 18 and up, every single person that came in was fit with one of these. These are very stiff. They cannot be ripped off. They're not the paper kind. These are stiff and they're cheap. Once they're on, they hand you their license. They hand you their proof of, of ID. If they come back to you with this Thank band you. off, Thank they don't get it. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. But it is control. Thank you. Uh, next is Luke Graham. <clears throat> And then Kip, uh, the Neo Lounge. Okay. Thank you, Mary, members of the council. My name is Luke Graham. Um, I'm in a unique, I'm sorry, unique experience right here. I uh, I sell tobacco, and I'm a tobacconist by trade, which means I cater to cigars. And as we know, with our federal and our state laws diminishing, there are less and less opportunities for people who are over the age of teen to make a legal and lawful purchase and have a place of enjoyment for this product. One of the few exceptions we have is the cigar bar. The cigar bar has been a unique opportunity for Richie Castellano, who could not be here today. He's been open for 12 years, so he's been from the full gamut of, the, of this ordinance from before and the after. As well as I work downtown in the downtown tobacco shop and world famous cigar bar, we have the opportunity to make a legal purchase someone of 18 to 20 years old and at which point I have to escort them to the door because they're not allowed to be in my establishment because we have an alcohol license. So one of the only opportunities for somebody who is under the age of 21, but it is at least 18 years of age, and to use, purchase, and enjoy a legal product is not available to them. Sometimes I have up to four wooden chairs they can sit outside and they can watch other people walk down the street and enjoy their products legally. Unfortunately for them, they don't go to our downtown location anymore. They go to our second location that I work at, which is at Gulf Coast Town Center Mall. Whereas I have a much larger accommodation, we don't have this ordinance imposed upon us, and we self-regulate ourselves. I have a very small frontal lounge area for 18 to 20 year olds to enjoy tobacco, non-alcohol, 
and I have a much larger seating area outside for them to enjoy tobacco and non-alcohol. We have a self-posted sign. We provide security on the weekends when it's larger, and I have no issues of underage people in that new establishment where they are allowed to come in for their legal purchase of tobacco and either exit or enjoy the front lounge. I don't have that problem in that store, and we've never had that problem in the past with the cigar bar. But unfortunately, with this ordinance, I would ask you to look over three issues for this. First of all, since it's enacted, how is it enriched the lives of the business owners that have put their time, money, effort, and risked it all to establish downtown as a viable business center? The second, how has it improved the community in general? How has it improved the lives of the people that live in this immediate area? Because of the downfall of the tight restrictions on our business, we don't have the service industry living in the service industry anymore. We don't have the waiters, we don't have the bartenders, the chefs, the managers of these establishments living and paying rent or owning in our immediate establishment. They can't afford to live down here because they don't make enough money anymore <coughs> working down here to live here. They either have to drive long distances or they actually get bussed in, which is probably going to be the future of many of the people that have to work <coughs> in the next 20 years. But the last thing I want to know, how has it enriched the lives of the rest of Florida? How has it enriched the, how have the rest of the people in Fort Myers suddenly become a better society or lived a better life now that we've taken the premonition of guilt, we've automatically had an assumption that somebody who comes downtown Fort Myers on a Friday night from 18 to 20 years old is there to illegally drink. The presumption of guilt's been placed upon them, but they've never been asked an opportunity. Do you enjoy alcohol? Do you like to drink? I have many people that come to our store that enjoy tobacco that do not want to drink alcohol, but they do not have the opportunity to enjoy it even though they can make a legal purchase of it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kip? <coughs> From the Neo Lounge? Yep. Good afternoon. My name is Kip Napple. I'm the owner of the Neo Lounge, downtown Fort Myers. I've been working downtown since 1996 until currently. Uh, a, a couple of things, guys. You know, at the, uh, the, the, I, I was downtown when things were great, before we had the ordinance and uh, worked through the ordinance. And uh, I think things are really hard for, for all of us as business owners right now. Something struck me when we came into the, uh, when we came into the meeting today and we said the prayer and, and, and uh, uh, Councilman Leonardo led us in a prayer and we talked about the service people. I mean, the service people that are serving our country can't even come into our establishments. And uh, people keep calling these people teens. They're, they're really not teens, they're young adults. They're 18, 19, and 20 years old. They, they can fight for our country. They can purchase tobacco. But not in downtown Fort Myers. They can't come into a club and dance. Uh, I, I think some of the other uh, uh, things that were talked about were, uh, you know, all, all of us want to work with the council and with the police department and uh, and try to make this thing work out, try to make this this thing doable. We've talked about the ID checkers, where if somebody actually causes a problem in the club, it would go into like a central database and uh, that person wouldn't be allowed in my club. But he also wouldn't be allowed in the Indigo Room because it's in a central database, according to our alliance that, that, that we've discuss forming. So I think that, uh, you know, we're, we're all making an effort here to, uh, to, uh, to make this a better place for everybody. Uh, we, we, want, we want to work with the police department to discuss to some type of a neighborhood watch committee. Uh, uh, you know, the, with the political climate right now and, and the way things are going, and uh, you know, I, I follow the elections, the national elections and the primaries and everything. I mean, uh, those 18 and 19 and 20 year olds are very influential in what's going on in the Democratic Party right now. I, I mean, if you if you think about it, I mean, uh, Barack Obama has a great uh, uh, a great young person following. And, uh, I think by us alienating them from downtown, uh, I just think it's wrong. I, I, I was opposed to the ordinance when we first did it. Mm -hmm. I'm still opposed for it today. And by the way, if we do adopt the ordinance. I, I'm one of the bars that won't allow 18-year-olds in because my liquor license costs $254,000. I don't, I don't want to take that risk, but I'm still supportive because I think it's really uh, uh, hurt downtown. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, next is Sam Sky, and then after that is, is Sean or Sean Corey. Shane Corey. Shane Corey. Good evening, 
My name is Sam Sky. I'm the CEO of Credit Restoration Brokers. And I come to you as a patient, but I actually come to you on two different levels. And I don't come to you on the financial level. I come to you as a patron. I also come to you from a level of responsibility. I'm the former vice president for three consecutive terms from 1992 1994 for the Oakland County um, uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving Vice President up in Michigan. I'm down here back in 1997. Back in March 4th, 91, I was a victim of a tragic car crash. And the person who uh, was the main cause was a 27 year old individual. And a lot of the drunk driving come from 16, 17 year olds, also 21 and up. And when we think about what we're losing downtown, and we're thinking about diversity and really either putting the cart before the horse or where are we really pointing the blame and what are we missing out on? Because when I go downtown, none of my friends want to go downtown anymore. So a lot of the bar owners here who I know who are great people, who I miss going to their clubs, my friends don't want to go down there because the people aren't there. <coughs> and you don't have the kind of diversity. And by really segregating the 18, 19, and 20 year olds, who lose a lot of ourselves and a lot of a gift for them to interact and learn from older people and mature and grow. And I think a lot of times we get a little consumed with fear because you're going to have a few bad apples, you're going to have some rambunctious people. And unfortunately, we can't protect everybody in society from either people rowdy or saying obnoxious things or elbowing somebody in the crowd. But as a patron, I miss going downtown. It's everything's more scattered, and it just comes from a patron's point of view. It comes from a responsible mothers against drunk driving point of view. These bar owners who I've known personally for you know over 10 years, they're friends of mine. They care about people. They care about the community, and they are not here for the dollar. They are here to make the community better, and they know the more people that they serve and the better time they have, the more it's going to produce and the more it's going to expand, the more it's going to snowball, and the more we try to control and restrict and segregate or judge the worst it's going to be and I think all the actions over the years have changed and I thank you for your time I just hope in your thoughts when you guys make a decision you think about those things as well thank you very much Sean or Shane Hi Dr. Nessie Sean and Corey